Okay, I was just trying to explain flux and I ran out of time. So um, I'm just showing you that the the electric flux then through a closed surface is if the, the lines of field, whenever lines of field go in on one side and come out the other side, then what you get is a net flux of, of zero. In other words, you count field lines that are going in as negative and ones that are coming out as positive. So as many field lines, every field line that goes into this surface, it comes out. And so the net the net flux through that is zero. Whereas on just a a regular surface that you can have a you get a net flux through here. But if it's a closed surface, then you get then the then the flux actually uh, is negative going in and positive coming out. And so you get no net flux. OK, one other thing about flux is that um, if we do have a positive charge, then say in here, and I have two spheres, um, one and two, one and two, and sphere um, one is much smaller than sphere two, but both of them enclose the charge. Okay, I'd like you to see something that, um, first of all, the amount of flux that is um, going through these surfaces is, is the same. Meaning that the lines, the, you can think of flux as being the amount of lines that go through the surface. And so um, they both have the same amount. How many lines is going through this surface right here? Let me count them. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How about up here? Well, do I have to count them? Do you see what I'm going to do here? It's whatever one goes through there goes through there. So there's still 15. And so the amount of flux, as long as the charge is enclosed, the amount of flux is the same in, in both those surfaces. So this sets up Gauss's law, which I'll explain um, in, in the next video. But this sets up Gauss's law because uh, it turns out that as long as the charge is enclosed by the surface, um, the only thing that matters then is just how much charge is enclosed by the surface to, to tell you for a closed surface um, how much flux is going through there. In other words, if I had some weirdly shaped surface, okay, this is just some weirdly shaped surface. Do you know what the net flux is through this surface? Well, uh, let's see. Let's count how many field lines there are. One, two, three. And if we did that, we'd still get 15. And so um, they all have the same amount of flux through them. Each one of these has the same amount of flux. Now you might say, well, that's kind of weird because the area of number two is so much bigger than one. The area is, yeah, it is. The sphere is much bigger in area, surface area. So yeah, it's got that. It's got more area. So the flux through two has got a big area, but the field out there is little. So it's E times A, where for I1, for this little surface, that's got a much bigger electric field because the lines are more densely packed in there, but it's got a smaller area. And that's how you can get the same flux through there. Um, in both both spheres, if this, if this charge is at the center, for both spheres, I didn't have to worry about, about the dot product because these are always exiting perpendicularly. So E dot A turns into just E times A. Um, why? Because if this is dA, or if that, that's a dA, isn't E the same direction? So when you do E dot dA, you get the same value. You get just E times dA. Okay. Um, let's see. One more thing then. So it turns out that for a closed surface, the only thing that matters is the charge that's enclosed. And so um, I'm going to tell you that this is, this is the equation then. The charge enclosed by a closed surface long subscript there divided by epsilon naught, just some constant, epsilon naught, that's called the permittivity of free space uh, it's some constant um, that I'll tell you about a little later on. Um, but it's just this divided by some constant. That's equal to how much flux is going through um, the closed surface. The amount of electric flux 
through this closed surface. And so um, what I'm telling you is if you do have some weirdly shaped surface, let's put some charges in here. So we'll put in, um, how about um, a positive 2Q right here and a negative 3Q right here and a um, positive 4Q right here. All right. Now, if I have a surface that looks like this, um, that's a closed surface. So it's it's almost like a lima bean shape, and it, and it encompasses the 2Q, if you can imagine that. Um, so if I want to know how much flux was coming out of this surface, then um, the total flux coming out of that surface is just, is just going to be the the Q enclosed, so the Q enclosed is 2Q all over epsilon naught, some constant, and that's equal to the flux through surface 1. That's surface 1. Okay. What if we had another surface that looked like this? What's the total flux through that surface? That encloses both the positive 2Q and the negative 3Q. So it's and it's this it's got some some uh, volume to it, and it encompasses those. Well, the total flux is just going to be the total charge enclosed. So two Q minus three Q, so plus two Q, um, plus a negative three Q, all over epsilon naught. That's your net flux through through surface two. We'll call that surface two net electric flux through surface two. And um, so that's just going to be negative Q over epsilon naught. That's what the net flux is through that surface. Now just how Gauss was able to figure out um, electric fields with this concept of, of uh, electric flux, I will tell you in the next video. All right, thanks for listening. Bye.